All righty, let's open the meeting at, no, I don't see my clock, 7.06. My dogs agree. agree. Hey, hey. <laughs> and the first order of business is to approve the minutes from September 15th, 2020. Did everybody get a chance to review them? Any changes, comments? If not, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Second? Second. All righty. All in favor? Uh, Michael? Aye. Denise? Yes. And I, too, so it's unanimous. Uh, next to financial statements. I emailed out a very short report. There's not much to report on this month as far as expense changes. Uh, you signed and reviewed 14 warrants electronically, totaling $43,172.52. Um, the general fund and school choice expense reports were shared. I'm happy to take questions if you have them. I don't have any concerns to report at this time. Um, we're still watching those revolving accounts that we had talked about last month, the early childhood and school lunch in particular. Uh, and just a quick update on the COVID expenditures. So Conway has spent roughly 55000 on COVID-related expenses here to date. We've used various funding sources to meet the school needs, such as general fund, school choice, and grant funding. There is a very small amount of grant funding yet that Kristen will still be able to spend by the end of December, um, but primarily it's used up at this point. And we have submitted a request to the town for access to the Municipal CARES Act funding. And if we're approved, uh, approximately 35,000 in expenses will be reimbursed to the school. And we'll put those back into the accounts that they were taken from. So that frees up that money for regular expenditures. Uh, we also put in for 20,000 of items um, that will be ordered if we're approved. It's primarily technology. Um, while we did get Chromebooks for the one-to-one -one initiative, they're on back order, but they're ordered. Um, we're finding that they're coming back in need of repair faster than we have them available to rehand out. So technology uh, would like to get another, I forget how much, um, they asked for the number that they asked for, but it would be backup Chromebooks. Also devices for faculty and staff who normally probably wouldn't have a device such as IAs, um, and then additional PPE and cleaning products. So um, I know that Tom submitted on our behalf with the town's request. I think he was putting that in today because it's due tomorrow, and I'll follow up with him in the next week or so to see what was allocated of our request of, it's a request of 55,000 to be reimbursed back to the school. You guys are getting off cheap. My, we've spent like $150,000 on PPE and technology, more than that actually, probably close wow. to $200,000 now. So. Yeah, Conway has been one of the lower um, expense numbers, you know, the number of kids is smaller, obviously, than some of the other schools, and the needs just haven't been as significant. Kristen's been really resourceful um, and conservative in ordering, you know, what we really need versus buying something not knowing if we need it. So, you know, I think that you've done a good job there, Kristen, but like Frontiers had a significant amount of expenditures. Like we got 160000 in grant funding that's done and gone and we're already dipping into general fund and school choice and asking the towns for, um, I want to say it was like a hundred, another 150,000 of municipal money. So, you know, Conway has been very fortunate that it hasn't been a huge hit, but if we look at that number relative to operating budget, it probably is, you know, significant of enough number. So it's all relative, but Kristen's done a good job of prioritizing needs and making sure we have everything we need to get by. Good job, Chris. Yep. Thank you. And they do have very good pencils, Elaine. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Can't be short on those now. <laughs> Any other expense right. questions for me? Nope. Did we hear anything about the governor's budget today? 
and how it might affect schools? Did anybody <laughs> listen? Well, Donnelly, nice job. Because we just finished, <laughs> so we, we, we have these back-to-back -back meetings. Sometimes we just aren't as, we just aren't as smooth sometimes. Um, yes, we did. We got that, but we got it around like 334. So okay. um, Shelly really hasn't, and we, I just know this, I talked to Shelly in the last meeting, hasn't digested it yet. Um, the MASS, the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents, sent out a notice that basically said, this looks a lot like the late July version with some of the more impoverished communities having some number adjustments. So you're going to see not a whole lot of change when if you looked at it in July. Um, I will put the link in there here so you can go um, really, really forward not during this meeting, not going to be forward during this meeting, um, but you can open that link on your computer and you can kind of go in and see if you want to go look at the number things are shaking. Okay. Remember, remember it's the governor's budget and remember it's this year's budget. Like we usually we're talking about, you know, we start talking about projections in next year's cherry right. at this point in time. So. All righty. All right. Did we have any public comment submitted? We did not. I Donna contacted me right before four o'clock and said there was nothing submitted. All righty. On to unfinished business, anti-racism and equality committee update. Um, Amanda uh, is going to join us again. Um, and then she, I told her, you know, like 7.15, <laughs> on, so okay. jump on. We'll, we'll stop our yapping. <laughs> um, and um, and we'll, we'll just kind of hand it back to her if you don't mind, Elaine. Um, but we will give, we can go right on to the next one since your dog's barking. I'll take it over for you, Elaine. And Kristen can give you a quick update on how school's going. Um, Kristen, you can go right into your principal's report is why I wrote it that way in there. So you can, if reopening is part of your principal's report, feel free to jump right in there. It's the best part of the program anyway. Okay, great. Yeah. So um, the student, staff, and families have settled back into a new schedule and a new school routine. We currently have 86% of our students hybrid and 14% of our students are full remote. Uh, we hit, That's changed a little bit from September because we had a couple of changes along the way from remote to hybrid. Um, the students are so, so happy to be back in school. They're just so full of joy when they come back, which is great. Um, and they've been extremely resilient during these challenging times. They're doing great with the four main prevention areas, which is cohorting, and social distancing and hand washing and face masks. I mean, even at recess when we let them get 10 or more feet apart and we say, okay, you can take your masks off, you know, this is a good distance. They're still being, <laughs> it's really hard to get them to take their masks off and they're, they're doing okay with it, you know, the uh, fresh air. Um, we've been outside 99% of the time. Um, even on that very cold day that we had last week, um, the kids were outside, so we're trying to we're trying to be outside as much as possible. Um, today, I met with the classroom teachers, and we've been talking about a lot about inside lunch, and we have a good plan for that. We're going to divide the classes into thirds, so an, um, the largest class is 19. So we won't ever have more than six, seven students at a time inside in lunch, and we'll be able to space them apart a uh, good 10 feet. But um, the staff, the staff has really been amazing. You know, it's a tough schedule. It's a rigorous schedule. It's, you know, one day with kids, one day without kids, one day um, sort of choice board and direction and then some professional development. And then they end the week either uh, with kids or remote with kids. Um, so it, it's, it's a tough schedule for the teachers, um, but they're doing a really good job just really connecting and flowing. And like I said, when the Kims come in, they're so happy. They're wonderful on the bus. The kids are following all of the rules. Um, we have drop off. Um, that's really down pat. The pickup, it's a little more iffy, but we're working on that. We don't have a lot of space to deal with when parents pick up, but we're making um, tweaks and changes every day. Um, you, you know, kids are coming in different entrances, leaving different entrances. So um, they're, they're settling in well. Uh, playground update is moving along. I'll be real quick because Amanda's with us. Playground update is moving along. I sent you the plan. Um, Carlos met with Shelly and I, and um, we just received a contract today. Shelly probably hasn't had a chance to look at it since she's had another school committee meeting, but that will be sent to 
the town and the town will sign off on the contract directly with Carlos. Um, uh, the nature trail, um, I, Phil was interested too in the nature trail. Ron Sweet reported that the nature trail um, is halfway open. So you can go to the top of the trail, it's cleared out, um, but there hasn't been time yet to clear off the other half so kids can walk up and then you have to come back down that way. But that's great for outdoor education. We have to clear the opening a little bit. We'll get some older kids to help us with that um, over the next two, well, tomorrow, I don't know, to, the next day, it looks like a rainy day. And Chain, the chainsaw course. education. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> the lane, just see Mr. Gifford, he's got all the kids in chairs and a big thing in the parking lot out back. I mean, it's, it's all, you know, it's separated from cars coming in. He's got his big white board and he's, you know, teaching like a college professor out there on the, on the pavement. You'd love, you'd love the sight. <laughs> School council will be meeting in October and starting um, our school improvement plan to present to you soon. So er everything's going really well. Like I said, the staff is tired, um, but it's just the kids. I don't know. You just get your energy from the kids and the kids are great. The families have been great and patient and supportive. So we're off to a great start. A good attitude goes a long way right now, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah. So are we on to um, our guests updating us on anti-racism and equality committee? Welcome. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's good to be back with you all. I'm giving uh, just a quick update on what's been happening, mostly in the uh, professional development space, because that's where the most kind of movement has been occurring. Um, so we, like I said, have been moving pretty quickly and I'll speak, I can speak more to the elementary side of things, even though the uh, committee is kind of across all levels of the district. Um, so the teachers and the staff in the elementary schools have been sorted into small groups of approximately 10 people per group and um, they've been sorted based on their interest in participating in one of two topics. So the two topics are history of racism in America and white privilege and identity. And uh, history of racism in America is really about expanding educators' knowledge of American history to include perspectives that have been kind of routinely left out of how we are taught our history. Um, so some of the topics that are discussed are um, genocide of indigenous people, how the South was able to really rewrite the history of the Civil War and misconception of the civil rights movement. Um, the white privilege and identity is more self-explanatory and topics covered in that pathway are understanding race as a social construct, uh, white affirmative action and what that has looked like in this country and the concept of color blindness and its shortcomings. So in the small groups, teachers and staff are moving through pre-designed curriculum that was developed by the professional development uh, committee and myself there are eight sessions, each approximately an hour 15 to an hour and a half in length that really delve into um, those topics. And as of today, um, teachers and admin and or admin who are taking part in this and staff are on their fourth week. So they're, they just reached the halfway point. Um, in that, in that work. Um, so overall, the feedback that has gotten to me has been very, very positive. And I think um, it speaks volumes because I think, I mean, I just popped in at the end of what Kristen was saying, but teachers are tired. <laughs> There's so much going on right now and they're asked to do so much, especially in the middle of a pandemic. And I think it really speaks volumes that people are 
really prioritizing this with their time and their energy and their focus. So it's been really great. And I'm really excited and happy to be a part of it. Yeah. So I'm here if you all have any questions, if I can give further updates if I missed anything, which I might have, probably have. <laughs> Any decline in the uh, Confederate flag flying around frontier there, or? <sighs> um, I can't speak to what has or has not really happened <laughs> at frontier, but I, I really hope so. Um, I do too. I know the teachers, I think the teachers have started to feel more empowered to take action when they see stuff like that. That'd be great. Yeah. It's hard it's good it is yeah it's hard but i think yeah i think overall the it's been an incredibly positive mm -hmm. experience thus far yeah that's awesome any questions yeah, amanda from conway grammar school you give great reviews on the the group work that's happening Yay. right now people are cool. very very engaged and and realizing things every day, whether it's new information or realizing things about themselves or thoughts. I mean, really great conversations. I just run around from group to group that's going on in Conway and um, really great. Yeah. Really great. Thank you for sharing that. I'm really glad to hear that. That's awesome. Any other questions, feedback? All righty. Thank you very much for the update. We appreciate yeah. it and would love to have you back. I'm sure I'll be back. back. <laughs> That's great. After the election. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> um, thank you all for having me. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All righty. Um, new business we're on to. We're moving right along, huh? Uh, we need a nominate, nominate an official delegate for the joint conference. Michael, you want to be that? <laughs> I fear you're into, I, into the, the uh, attempt. I'm into it, but, uh, I, I worry that there's a lot of, uh, personal things going on in my life that it might not be the right time. So, okay. So, I mean, basically, it's the it's it's virtual this year. The meeting in which this delegate would have to be available for is in Saturday, November seventh at one p.m. So it's the middle of the Saturday afternoon, really convenient on people's lives. Um, I, I with the Sunderland was kind of in the same spot. It's like people's lives are a little upside down right now. I said, you know, what, we're going to get the um, we can submit a delegate, and then um, when we see the agenda of what's being voted on. You know what I mean? It may not be of enough substance to to merit giving up a Saturday afternoon, so to speak. I made the joke. Maybe it could be you know voting salad dressings for next year versus the <laughs> education as we know it. So, right. A lot of their votes in the past have not been. I'll just be honest. There's not earth. You know. You know yeah. They're, you know they're not huge. So. Well, I know I have plans yeah. that weekend. So. Denise, unless you know you don't. Yeah, I would have done that, except it's my mom's 80th birthday party. No. All right, let's so nominate no. Phil. I nominate Phil. Can't do it that day. All right, <laughs> who wants to second my nomination of Phil? I'll second it. All right. All in favor of voting for Phil as our delegate. Uh, Denise? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I do too. So it's unanimous. Phil is our delegate. He loves that stuff. <laughs> All righty. On to snow days. I heard you on the radio there, Darius. So you got this all done, huh? You know what? Someone said that too. That's so funny. Denise just told you that. They take a, they took a clip from something. I gotta be careful what I say. I mean, I try to be witty on this on this uh, on this show. Uh, I know it's bear country. I'm like, I feel so uninformed. <laughs> <laughs> the superintendent doesn't even communicate with us. Um, so basically, it's just discussion only. Um, I was just getting input from people regarding snow days. The commissioner has um, 
basically said you can have remote days on snow days this year. They didn't go so far to do it like what Rhode Island did. Rhode Island basically said snow days will be remote days. Done. Statewide made a decision for everybody. Instead, they just said, yeah, you guys can do what you want. Go your local control that we, you know, if that we, you know, you know where I'm going to go with that. So um, anyway, so I'm just looking at different people's different ideas regarding it. Um, I've heard a lot of feedback on um, a couple of the points that I've made in the other meetings is that it's a, as people who are watching, it's not as simple as just we had like two or three snow days last year. I think we only had two, actually. I remember the senior class was really mad at me until we closed school for the end of the spring. And then I think it was even. Um, but the um, that there are a lot of day, you know, the, the two hour delay does not work as well in our current model. Um, we have a hybrid where teachers are going to be in two places, especially in the secondary as well, where they're doing the kind of the dual platform as well. Um, so I think two hour delays are pretty much going to be out of the window this year. If you add up all the two hour delays and snow days, put them together, now you're talking about, like, you, know, you know, five, six, seven, eight number of these things. So it is actually does impact people's lives. And whenever I do do a snow day, you know, there's 1500 lives connected to that, though, with remote versus hybrid, whatever. But you know what I mean? We So it is a kind of a serious um, thing. Um, it used to be the most stressful thing in my life. It isn't anymore. <laughs> um, anyway, so <laughs> you ain't COVID. Um, so uh, <laughs> it's not enough. Um, Crazy. But, but some of the things that we have to consider as well is that um, both students and teachers don't have the, may not have internet, may not have internet, may have internet problems during storms um, and that kind of thing. So, you know, we're looking at, can we do asynchronous learning if it is remote on those days? Um, let me just give you the feedback I've heard from other people. Sometimes it stifles people's feedback. Um, but I basically heard like, you know, if we get a lot of snow, we, we should still have some snow days. But if we get those smaller amounts, which travel is an issue, um, we should go to the remote and, and try to get as much of the learning in prior to June because the quality of a day um, in the middle of, you know, February is better than late June. And so even if it is remote, um, you know, so that kind of thing. So. Anyways, I'm just getting feedback from people. There's no clear definition who makes the decision in the sense of our, do I call these days? I think in basically Frontier, <laughs> thank you Frontier, school committee basically said, yeah, you can do this series. You're not, we're not making a, a, a school committee vote to decide you can do all remote days or not. You can you can have that one. So, um, because we're going, going down this kind of route of, um, you know, what if there's a power outages? But if we get a foot and a half of snow, that's different than four inches in ice, you know, those kind of things. Um, so supposed to be a snowy winter. Oh, I'm sure it's going to be. <laughs> okay, this thing is going snowing locusts. You yeah, know what I mean? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Darius, well, do you get I, that I information? Do you get that information in time to make a call? Like, do you know? Like, there's various, you know, different types of storms. Do you know if people don't have power and and all these things so that you can make that decision, whether it's a remote day or a, you know, uh, just a snow day. Would I, how would I know that? I mean, I you guess. You make that call based on a storm. Yeah. Yeah. I make, I make, I mean, right now the, the process on snow days, you know, the old process is obviously I'm looking at weather. I'm part of a group chat with all the superintendents in the area about what they're doing. And I'm part of a group chat of all the, um, you know, with Ron Sweet and all the road heads, um, the, 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 the superintendents of the roads of the four towns. And so basically sometimes it's very easy. Roads aren't open, close school. You know, sometimes it's like, yeah, we should be okay if it holds out. Those are the ones that it's like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? So that's usually, you know, so I do the best I can with the information I have. So in situations like this, if we're getting a nor'easter that says we're gonna get a minimum of eight inches, I think it'll be pretty easy for me to be able to make that call ahead of time. Or um, maybe I say tomorrow's gonna be a remote day and I don't know if I, I don't wanna get into I want, there's a part of me that wants to keep it simple. You know what I mean? It's hard enough, you know. Um, either so why can't it just be an automatic remote day? That's because of the technology and power issues? Yeah, I mean, so I mean, this is, so again, I'm still getting feedback. I got one more meeting after this one, but the idea is, so I heard some other things too, like getting a foot of snow, there's something magical about a snow day for kids and how the world shuts down and that kind of stuff. See, Denise, you gotta give me your input there. There's nothing magical about well, it. Well, I think we have this great opportunity to have remote days. We're set up for it now and why not do it? 
I, I guess I don't, unless we really have some technology or power issues, that would be different. But, you know, the snow days are really more around driving. And since driving may not be necessary, I guess I don't understand why we wouldn't have a, you know, a remote day in place of a snow day. And Denise, in terms of electricity and internet, um, kids can be uh, ready at the go with packet snow day. Uh, yes, I heard about them. this on Bear Country. Yeah, yeah. So that's an option too. Okay. So what does that mean, Kristen? They would have an advertising uh, agency for Bear Country. Okay. <laughs> So, I suggested oh, we, blizzard bags like 10 years ago, by the way, because my sister was doing them in New Hampshire and everybody looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what the hell's a blizzard bag? And that okay. New Hampshire was ahead of us in Massachusetts was a little embarrassing, I got to say, but they were on this a long time ago. For example, when we didn't have school Thursday, just like Elaine said, some kids had internet, some kids didn't have electricity. And so but they always had their their work for the week sort of, you know, that they could work on. So it would be the same kind of thing. And as we discussed, snows, most snowstorms don't creep up on us. I mean, every now and then we get a Monday, like, oh, we didn't see this ice storm coming kind of deal or something like that. But most of the time, the way a snow day works is, you know, if you've been in schools, the day before a snow day is, because it, all it is is chatter in the halls and people knocking on my door, what you gonna do? You know what I mean? And like, I don't know, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So, um, which is fun. It's a fun thing to have going on. But, um, you know, I think teachers knowing that night would be like, hey, guys, tomorrow, girls, tomorrow, if we don't have, we don't have school, if you don't have internet, you know, read the next chapter and blah, 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 or, you know, depending on the level, you know, obviously. And, yeah. Yeah, and even in Conway, I, I'd say that most snowstorms, I don't lose Wi-Fi and I don't lose power. That doesn't happen all that often, at least where I live. It might be different for others. Does up on Poland and North Poland. <laughs> True. Nothing up there. Nothing. Not even named by the mailbox. In December and get it back in May. Come on now. Don't worry. They're not watching us. I was trying to see storm on a mailbox or something. I know the city of Elaine lives in. I wasn't there, but I was hoping to see a storm or a cancer or something. Corner, right around the yeah. corner. Yeah. We can walk to each other's house if we have to. Share our blizzard bags. All right, Dr. Campbell, I've gotten my information here. All right. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to leave it up to you also, right? Yeah, I'll come up. I'll have a statement um, after Wheatley has a meeting tomorrow. Then I'll come up with a statement. I'll let parents know what's going yeah. on. Great. Um, so we don't have a Halloween storm of what it was, 2017. Yeah, it happened. I lost some trees in that one. All right. So the harassment policy, we're supposed to all review it and vote on it next time. So if, if you've read it, good. If you haven't read it, you still have time before the next meeting. Um, were these uh, status changes or? So this is a, the, the Title IX law basically, um, I mean, this, the harassment in, in, within Title IX, um, basically a new law was put out. And so this is, um, and I'll read the highlights of it to you so you can skim read it. Um, they, they, they narrow the definition of sexual harassment under Title IX. They limit the obligation to investigate complaints to only the, um, those who would occur on school on, um, during school program or activity not related to off-campus conduct. Um, there's mandatory response obligation of schools in providing supportive measures. Um, there's a change in the standard of liability for schools. There's a more detailed grievance procedure that will alter the way schools process and respond to complaints, and you can see that within the pro within the procedures. Um, Hearings are optional, but written requests are required. Um, schools may choose what standard of evidence to use, preponderance of evidence versus clear, clear and convincing, clear and convincing evidence. And schools must offer both parties an appeal from a determination regarding responsibility. So there's a lot of points in it. Um, I think the biggest that was asked in the last meeting um, was the biggest thing operationally. We used to have a Title IX um, coordinator who would investigate if there was an issue with this, would investigate and then make a determination. Now they want the person who oversees it not to be doing the investigation. That's going to be one of our biggest things. Somebody else has to do the investigation. So with a limited number of administrators, that it, it does make things a little bit more difficult. But at the same time, I think it removes blind spots. If someone's doing investigation and a determination, they can maybe not, not as thorough rather than having a third party. So I think those are some of the biggest changes. 
note that whenever we are doing something with this, we're talking with legal counsel through the process. This is a very, um, a law with a lot of liability to the school. This law um, and policy affects all people, not students, faculty, volunteers, you know, coaches, all those kind of things. Everybody who's employed or works within a school, this policy protects. So it's a big deal in the sense of our policies, in the sense of that, make sure it's correct. Um, however, this was, you know, get written up by our attorney and sent to us. So it has his stamp of approval on it. Um, and I, as I said, anytime we go through one of these investigations, we work with an attorney. So it's not like we go off on our own to navigate this kind of thing. Cause we don't just, you know, fortunately we don't have a lot of these complaints. So when we have them and we don't have an HR department, so you don't just hand it off to the HR department to go handle, we kind of, um, get help to walk us through it. So, um, if you have complex questions on this, let me know ahead of time before the vote so they can reach out to the attorney. Cause this is, again, it's not something I put together and, you know, know the ins and outs of every, you know, if you have a, you know, what you think might be a tough question, you'll know that I will probably have to ask for help in deciphering that. Or maybe I know it. Yeah, it'll surprise everybody. There you go. Reading only on that. And then the next policy is <clears throat> reading as well on the um, public comment. And so the, the change there is I did not come up with a phone system to find a phone way of doing over five committees. I just didn't find a way that could do that. However, um, I added to this meeting and, and thus also put it into um, an update of the public comment to allow people to um, ask to be invited to the meeting. So if you want to come to the meeting, you just simply send me an email and say, I would like to request to speak during public comment. I can then send that person an individual invite, just like the, the links you clicked on to get onto the screen. And so there's kind of a, there's accountability and vetting there where you're not going to get people Zoom bombing who gave us their email address and so on and so forth. So, um, Did you ever get any results of that? Um, we did, and they were not able to determine. They were able to catch the guy. So, um, whether it was local or distance, they believe it was distance. Um, they don't believe it was a local thing. They it's clearly was an adult, um, not you know for things like teenagers and bad pranks and that kind of stuff. It was clearly not, um, and um, it was multiple people as well. So, you know. A group of people somewhere who are having fun and, and they're seeing a pattern of it where they kind of go through and they they troll for these different sites and they just jump on and i guess it's a i don't know recreation <laughs> they need to something better to do with their time i would say <clears throat> yeah it's so constructive use of their time that yeah recommend. anyway so this was kind of a it allows people to come to our meetings it puts that kind of layer of protection until we get back to our normal, our normal process of public comment. So again, first reading on that too. All righty. So now we need to go to executive session. Um, so, if I could, if yeah. we could do all the reports, that'll make it for anybody who does watch our meetings for the okay. entertainment purpose. What I have to do is I have to stop the recording they can continue to stream. They got to re restart the recording when we go. So, if we put all our content up front, we do have to return to session to vote. But it just gets all the content out of the way. Okay. If you think it's a good idea, then we just have to come back and adjourn. You just come back, do the vote. If you're going to vote on the possibly vote on the transportation yeah. contract, and um, adjourn. Yeah. Okay. Right, so, so uh, let me see. I do not have a report. Kristen gave her report. I think you've given your report. It would only be if we have a collaborative report, which I don't know if we've had a collaborative meeting, have we? We've had one meeting. Oh. It was really just an introduction, um, but not a lot to uh, talk about there. Okay. So that's it for reports. I did send out my superintendent's report earlier today, so you can read through Great. it. If you have any questions, please do. We, we, we can read most of the time, so... Okay. Figured you're ready to be, be done for the night after two meetings, right? Today? I give you my full attention. Oh, you yes. Have you have me for the entire evening. Okay. I have no there plans after this. Okay. <laughs> um, so now we can, everybody knows how to log out of this meeting, log into executive session, and then we'll do roll call into executive session. Nope. You got to do roll call out of the live meeting to go to executive session.
Oh, we do have to do a roll call out of this. Yep. Okay. You only need to do the first one because we really don't have anything with the teachers association to go over. I, okay. put them both, I put both executive sessions together because we always, because we're in constant negotiations with the teachers right now for right. conditions, but that was just left on there. There's nothing really to report. So just okay. chapter 30A, section 21A to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for contracts negotiation with non-union personnel, Gripco, Transport Gripco Transportation. Thank you for that. Can I have a vote, roll call vote? Michael? Yes. Yes. Denise? Yes. And I vote yes. So we'll see you all in executive session. Well, that was an enlightening executive session we just had. <laughs> so we are recorded and we are streaming. Yes, we are. <laughs> so don't. So I so need to. People I know that we laughed a, hard in executive session. Do I need to do a roll call? You do in? on the vote. All right, on the vote or back into this meeting? No, nope, just no. Nope, you, you're gonna do a roll call vote for the MOA, and then you're going to do a roll call vote oh. to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we have been presented with the MOU with uh, Gripco's bus company, and I need a vote to uh, accept this. Um, so I need I'll a make, motion to ac accept this, I'll make right? A motion to accept, I'll make a motion to accept that. MOU. And a second? Second. Thank you. And uh, roll call vote, Michael? Aye. Denise? Yes. yes. And I do too, so it is unanimous. So we are unanimous of the MOU with the bus company. And now I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All right. And Michael? Yes. Denise? Yes. And I vote to adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for all your hard work. And uh, we appreciate it. And we'll see you soon.